it's inevitable that the lead singer gets most of the attention. So, um, yeah, I think everyone's comfortable with that and I've learned to, to kind of make friends with it myself as well. <laughs> Well, I joined an existing band. The band had been in existence um, for a year when I joined in 1985, and I was at school. And Mango Groove actually sprung out of a, a punk band called Pet Frog. John Layden was the founding member, and he was in a punk band. But his real passion was South African Marabi Kwela music. That was his absolute um, love. And he met... Um, big voice Jack LaRole, uh, somewhere in town, found out, you know, that, I mean, Jack was the real deal. Jack used to play um, that music back in the day. So he um, joined John's band, and that sort of morphed into Mango Groove. And yeah, so Pet Frog was, you know, that name didn't, didn't make much sense anymore, so the name Mango Groove was chosen. Fun, fruity, tropical, also a sexist pun, man. Mm -hmm. Go groove. So that's how it began. So I joined a year into the existence when I was at school, and that's how my, my adventure began. He, he was, you know, he was older than me. He's six foot six. So he's massively intimidating. Well, not anymore. Now he's my best friend. But uh, I, I did find him scary. You know, my 17 year old self thought. This giant is frightening. And then, of course, we became colleagues and then friends, then romantically involved, and now happily divorced. So, you know, it's a very successful relationship because he is now my best friend. He's been upgraded from husband to best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mango has made um, an impact on people to a large extent because of the timing. Um, you know, we were, that first album that we're celebrating, the 30th anniversary of the release of that album, um, that was around the time of huge change, as you say. And South Africans were ready for, for change. And I think Mango, being a non-racial band, black and white South Africans, varying ages, making music together, kind of showed what was possible. And the message was never overtly political, but just doing what we were doing kind of made a point. It's wonderful. Um, you know, the band right now is in a very happy place. You know, there's huge affection, huge respect, and kind of crazier than ever. You know, there's a real joy. And we feed off the audience, audience feeds off us, and we just, we just have fun. We just love what we do. So the 11, I think, just helps make it really fun and really crazy. <laughs> You know, the very first solo album I did was, I intended it to be, it had to be different from Mango, because otherwise, you know, it, just, it should just be Mango. So I worked abroad, I worked um, with people who did not know me, uh, which, what, which was what I wanted. I wanted a sort of, a, like a re bit of a reinvention, really. And uh, in South Africa, there was a, a sense of, uh, but that's not what we associate Claire with. Like, what is this funny sound? <laughs> So it was weird. It was it was very good for me creatively and emotionally. It was very positive, uh, and some people really liked the album. But it it you know I think people really wanted me to be connected with Mango Groove, and I I, I kind of get that. The song was actually written um, just after John and I separated, and um, we were already working on the album, and it was very much John's notion, and it's something that. You know, kindness is its something that really doesn't cost anyone anything. It makes a huge difference in just your approach to other people. And, and in fact, being kind to yourself. I think so often we're unpleasant to ourselves. We have unreali unrealistic expectations. I think things like social media put enormous pressure on people to be a certain way or to feel a certain, that they have to be a certain way. I think we can actually start with being kind to yourself and realizing, you know, that you deserve to be loved and respected. And if you take that out from yourself, you, that, that, you can just, that becomes the way to live. Well, obviously, you know, we've been very busy over the last few years, but the 30th anniversary feels particularly special because it, you do, as a result, look back at where you've come from. And often in so doing, you 
almost see a way forward as well. I think you have to look back to look forward. So the show is going to be lots of memories, lots of energy, lots of fun, all the songs I think that people would want us to play, a couple of surprises, and just huge energy. I think for young artists, I think the trick really is to be original, to find your voice and to stick to your, to stick to your convictions. Don't let people try and turn you into a wannabe this or a wannabe that. You know, we had that in our early days of, you know, don't you want to do a bit more this or a bit more that? And we kind of stuck to what we believed in. And that, it wasn't always easy, but it did ultimately pave the way for us to do what we've been doing for more than 30 years. So I would say, stick to your convictions, trust yourself, and um, be kind to yourself.